Hey everyone, Ken Surfs here, and it's time for another tribute shave. This one is a tribute to an American actor that died much too young, uh, and he has become synonymous with uh, nostalgia from the 50s. And I'm talking about uh, the American actor, Mr. James Dean. Uh, although he died in 1955, if you can believe it, before the release of the two movies that would uh, just immortalize him, Rebel Without a Cause and uh, Giant, uh, he, I don't think he would have known the impact he would have had on America. He did uh, a lot of bit parts in television, and he released... The only movie he lived to see was uh, his first motion picture, East of Eden. And I took, uh, I took some uh, uh, classes when I was in college. I was starting out as a fine arts major, and I got to take history of film. So I got to see all three movies. And uh, East of Eden was a good movie, don't get me wrong. There's probably some critics out there who say, oh, this is one of his best. But uh, it, it, it was a good movie. But uh, really, what put him on the map was Rebel Without a Cause and Giant. And it was a shame because he, he had shot Rebel Without a Cause. He finished production on that. He, he shot all of Giant. And shortly after filming, he had a new Porsche Spider that he had picked up, bought sight unseen. A brand new sport, brand new Spider. And he was taking it to Salinas, California, and he was driving uh, through Central California. And on September 30th, 1955, shortly after 5 p.m., he uh, collided with another car on the corner of the 46 and the 41, just outside of Chalome, C-H-A-L-O-M-E, uh, in California, and was killed. And shortly after he was killed, Rebel Without Cause was released, and it became a huge, huge success, uh, a huge, you know, popular, popular movie. And then Giant with Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor came out. And again, big success. So most of his success came after he was uh, no longer with us. So today we're going to do a tribute to Mr. James Dean, and I actually had the pleasure, I've seen it several times, but I've driven past the memorial, uh, at the intersection of the 41 and the 46 in California. And there is a James Dean Memorial about 500 yards west of where the crash site took place, and then a makeshift memorial at the crash site. So you'll be seeing most of those in the upcoming, er, uh, during this video. So today I'm going to be doing a shave with a new razor. I mean, uh, a classic. I've never tried one before. 1953 Gillette president. I mean, this is in rhodium. 1953. Ah, it's like 11 years older than me. And oh, just flawless. Look at that. Just flawless. And I've actually had my 1959 uh, red tip restored. And this just, this rhodium plating is just fantastic. So I'll be using this today uh, for the first time. And with it, I'll be using a Gillette Super Thin. I'm going to use some uh, some vintage stuff, man. Tobacco. Original shave stick. And the original Old Spice by Scholten. This bottle I only bring out on uh, special occasions. This is an original Old Spice by Scholten. And I'll be using it in today's shave. So, I think I've got this just about ready. Let me make some room and we'll be right back. All right, let's uh, open the Gillette up. Now, the president in rhodium was made from 1953 to 1955. And from what I've read on Badger and Blade and the Shave Nook and some of those other forums, that the 53 was the most aggressive razor out of the, uh, the releases. So... I'm assuming it's going to be as aggressive as the red tip, but we're going to find out. So we'll put a Gillette Super Thin in there. A Gillette into the Gillette. All right, let's open this up. Drop the Super Thin in there. Let's lock it in. Very nice. Oh, man, 
I can't get over this razor. I'll have to tell you later on in the video how I came to acquire this from eBay. I'll have to uh, go into that story. Oh, and uh, the brush today, oh God, it's soaking, is a badger from Edward London and Company. One of the first people to uh, like recognize my channel and he sent me this brush Ah, it must have been four years ago. And I've used it in quite a few videos, but uh, it's uh, all metal, metal handle, and uh, I'll be using that. So let us get this shave started. Ah, feels good to be clean shaven again, no more goatee. All right, try a face lather with that brush. Oh, I've got a few days growth going. The back smells good. All right. Get a lot of that water out of that badger. And if she doesn't lather up the way I want it, I'm going to hit it like this too. There we go. So did you have a good weekend? December is here. Christmas is coming. It'll be here before we know it. Oh. Yeah, I did a trip up north a couple of weeks ago. And I've driven past that junction. And they call it the James Dean Memorial Junction. Uh, probably about... Five times in my lifetime. And it's always kind of interesting because with the actual crash, uh, he was in his Porsche Spider and he collided with a big old sedan in the uh, late evening. And it was a silver Porsche Spider. And uh, he had it labeled Little Bastard. That's what he called it. And the gentleman who didn't see him said the sun was just setting and uh, he here's the silver car. He just didn't quite see it. So, uh, what a terrible, terrible, terrible tragedy. And I've got footage of the memorial, and I tell you, people come from all over the world to see this. Uh, and it's just something people in nowadays, they, some people probably out there don't know who James Dean is. But uh, the movies were really something for their time. Teenage angst. Now it's like not another teen movie, but uh, a real serious movie. And uh, it really put him on the map. So you can fast forward through this if you want. But here is some footage from the James Dean crash site and the memorial. It was on this very spot in 1955, right at the junction of the 41 and the 46, where James Dean died when his car was hit by another car right here at this junction. He was on his way to a race in Paso Robles in his Porsche Spider. And uh, here is the memorial, the makeshift one, the official one you'll see in a sec. itself by the way this razor is working great the memorial itself the makeshift one changes depending on what people have put out there 
there was a lot of sunglasses out there, a lot of notes, you know, uh, just candles, coins. But depending on who puts stuff out there, it's always changing. But the actual physical memorial, a little bit west of that, has seen a lot of tourists. When I was out there, uh, not this time, but the last time, there was a lot of uh, tourists from Japan visiting that site. People come to see where these events happen. I was in Dallas. I had cut myself the other day and I think I just did it again behind the ear. With that mula. I think I just opened that up again. But in Dallas, they actually, on the road outside of the book depository, they actually have an X in the road where the first shot hit John F. Kennedy. So people come from around the world to see these places. But uh, if you're ever in Central California, you ought to take a stop by the James Dean Memorial Junction. I got soap in my ear today, right, gents? Man, that razor is something. I had got that. Uh, the father-in-law had asked what I wanted for Christmas. And they had a, I saw it was a, an aristocrat, a gold aristocrat in the box for sale. But it did not have the gold uh, blade holder. So I thought, and he bought it, right? and he said, I'll give it to you for Christmas. So I thought, hey, you know, I need to get a blade holder to make that set complete. And I saw a gentleman selling a, uh, a tech, a Gillette tech, in an aristocrat box, beat up box, but it had the gold blade holder, and I wanted that. So I bid on it and won. The package arrived. It had a mint Gillette fat boy two other mint razors and dozen unopened boxes of vintage razor blades. And so I contact the guy and I go, hey, you know, uh, I got the package, but I don't think this is what I ordered because, I mean, I've been 20 bucks for all of this stuff. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I gave you a few extras. That's what you ordered. I go, um, so then about an hour or two later, he goes, oh, wait, you got the wrong package. So the guy who had ordered all that stuff <laughs> ended up with this crappy tech razor, uh, and he was a, a, a little hysterical. So uh, I mailed the uh, package to the gentleman who had won, and he mailed me my package. And then the guy who uh, had originally sold all of that, he sent me this and a couple of gem razors in appreciation. When I first got this, it was just covered with soap scum, and it looked terrible. And to my surprise, man, it cleaned up like brand new. The only thing it was missing is the box that it came in, the president box. So I'm keeping my eye out on eBay for one of those. Just the box. So if you guys know of anybody who's selling a box, let me know. This doesn't seem so aggressive at all. It's given a very close shave though. So James Dean had just finished shooting Giant. And the last, the, ironically, uh, isn't it ironic? He had done a public service announcement for safety on the highway. So for the next two minutes, Here's the last public service announcement, announcement uh, created by James Dean. And you can fast forward this if you Ladies want. Ladies and gentlemen, James Dean. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Gig. We asked Jimmy over today because he's a racing man himself. A real one, not a crazy one. Incidentally, I think I should explain that Jimmy just stepped over from the set of Giant. And need I add, he plays a Texan. But speaking of racing, have you ever been in a drag race? Are you kidding me? I just thought I'd ask. 
No, Jim races in the tradition, you might say. Real racing cars, real tracks. How fast will your car go? Oh, an honest miles an hour. Clocked, it would run about 106, 7. You've won a few races, haven't you? Oh, one or two. Where? Well, I showed pretty good at Palm Springs. I ran a baker's field. Jimmy. We probably have a great many young people watching our show tonight, and for their benefit, I'd like your opinion about fast driving on the highway. Do you think it's a good idea? A good point. I, uh, I used to fly around quite a bit, you know. I took a lot of unnecessary chances on the highways. And I started racing, and uh, now I drive on the highways, I'm uh, extra cautious. Because no one knows what they're doing half the time. You don't know what this guy's going to do with that one. On a track, there are a lot of men who spend a lot of time developing rules and uh, ways of safety. And uh, I find myself being very cautious on the highway. I don't have the urge to, to speed on the highway. People say racing is dangerous, but I'll take my chances on the track any day than on a highway. Well, gig. I think I'd better take off. Oh, wait a minute, Jimmy. Um, one more question. Do you have any special advice for the young people who drive? Take it easy driving. The life you might say might be mine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Be safe on the highway when the poor guy dies on the highway. Now, out of those three movies, a Rebel Without a Cause is just awesome. I mean, you see him in the Griffith Observatory in the, in the Switchblade fight. And uh, shot all around Los Angeles. But I really, really like Giant. Kind of a modern cowboy movie. Had a hell of a good plot. And it's probably my favorite out of the three. Wow. Excellent shave. The gold version, is that the Diplomat? Or the, uh, they have a gold version they released also, and I, I forget what they call that. This one is the President, the Rhodium version, but the gold one was the Diplomat, or I, I don't think it's the Aristocrat. But anyhow, you probably know more than me. What a killer vintage razor, though. I was going to put clips from uh, Rebel Without a Cause in some of the movies in here, but uh, man, Fox or his estate, they'd have come down on me real hard. He said I was a copyright violation. So I'm trying to give credit on those photographs where I got them from. And uh, actually here is uh, his grave. Uh, I think it's back in Indiana. Here's uh, James Dean's grave. I would go there sometime to visit that too. Man, the Porsche Spider. And then they have the Eagles song. Uh, I was listening to that, James Dean by the Eagles, uh, when I was out there. And. Uh, It's just a wide, wide open place, and, oh, man. A lot of the actors have got into race car driving. I mean, uh, Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, we had, we lost Paul Walker uh, in a car accident, too. Modern people will know Paul Walker, but, uh, yeah, a lot of those uh, actors, they really got into race car driving, and uh, I guess McQueen and Newman, you know, they, they, they did real well. It's just a shame that, uh, man, I'm talking about all these guys, we've lost them all now. So it's like, well, if you get a chance, check out James Dean movies. And I do recommend Rebel Without a Cause, but I really recommend Giant. It was an excellent movie. 
And ironically, they, they told me in my history of film class that there was a, you know, a curse on Rebel Without a Cause because all of the main actors in that movie passed away, you know, in, under terrible circumstances. James Dean, and uh, Natalie Wood, Sal Mineo. It's, uh, I don't know if the movie was cursed, but it was a good movie. And in its day, man, it, it had those, those drive-in theaters packed and uh, probably spawned a lot of chicken and a lot of drag racing. So uh, if you get a chance, check that out. Thank you very much for watching this tribute to uh, James Dean. Thank you for watching The Shave, and I uh, appreciate your subscriptions. And uh, I will be doing a 8,000 subscriber giveaway soon. Almost forgot the best part, the burn. Almost forgot the original stuff. Oh, and the original stuff burns very, very, very well. Wow. Wow. The Schulten formula. If you come across some, man, it's... It's really kind of cool to have. And wet shaving is an addiction, so you collect. And uh, I've got a lot of collectibles here, but I do use them. Try to rotate them and use them often. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Until next time, it's Ken Sir saying have a great evening.